All right, kids. Uh, we're back with this new 28, and I've already kind of skipped ahead here. This is the finished scar right here. And I pulled the tape off of it. And the way I like to smooth this out um, is use one of these razor blades again. Utility razor blade that I break. Put them into a vise, grab a pair of pliers, and snap them. And then I come up with little pieces like this. You know, that are real handy for scrapers. And so, just come across like that. Scrape it. I use my fingers back here as a, as a leveler. So, just scrape it for a while. You want to be careful because um, your lacquer finish is softer than the super glue. So, it's easy to scrape away the lacquer and not get the super glue. So, you just got to kind of watch it when you start getting close. Where you can just see the... Uh, little ripple of the super glue then you stop and you get a piece of like 400 grit wet dry sandpaper you get it wet sand it down and again i just use my finger you could use a small piece of wood as a leveling block but finger works pretty good um then after i get all that done then i get this rag i have up here that is pretty well full of rubbing compound so I don't have to use any more. And then just kind of smooth it out a little bit. Polish it up. That's all you got to do. And so there it is. It's kind of a black line, but that's because it was stained. You know, you can see the how dirty it is back here. Um, it's stained by the previous ebony. There's not much you can do about that. So it won't be that bad. That's just a sixteenth of an inch or so. It's not much. So not a big deal. Here's the bridge that I trimmed down. Um, I showed you how I was going to do that in the previous video. You can see the base is nice and clean now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it on here. And I don't have the saddle slot in yet, so that's what we're going to do now is figure out where we're going to put this bridge. So I'm going to get me a clamp. And I'm going to get a piece of wood, which I don't have over here. Fish. Where are those little pieces? There they are. There they are. Um, I just want a little piece of wood to put here so as not to scratch the bridge, mar the bridge. I'm just going to put this clamp in here. I'm just holding it down. I'm not doing a big deal here. Okay. Now, because I don't have a saddle slot in here, I'm going to take a couple of measurements. And basically, I want the front edge of the bridge to be 11 and 1 8 of an inch from the front of the guitar here. So I think you can see this in the GoPro. I don't have a monitor, but I just put my finger down right there. And 11 and 8 looks good. Flip it up over here. And as often is the case... The trouble side needs to go a little closer. So I'm going to loosen this up. These Martin bridges are not always on their straight. So not only are they off for the intonation, but a lot of times, hmm, here we go. They're not quite on. It's hanging up on that corner of the super glue. Come on, guy. I'm going to put it on right there. There we go, right there. Anchor that down. Okay, the base shot slid forward too, but that's alright. Bring it back. There we go. There we go. Okay. Oh, that needs to go back a little bit. Both need to go back just a hair. So now what I can do is bring this little piece of wood I had here a minute ago and just kind of tap it. Boom. We'll just go back onto that. <laughs> yeah, that's okay, you know. It's going to fit perfectly right there in that hole. Right there. Okay. Hold that. Bring the base shot back. Okay, measure it again. Just 
still needs to go back. Yeah, both sides. Okay. No problem. I'd like for it to go back a little. Because it's just a little bit of finish. The bare wood showing on the back here. So I'm just going to tap this back. perfectly now that I've got the bridge where I want it I'm going to pull the two E strings off and this is why I keep the strings up on the headstock you probably can't see this in the video but that's okay and I'm going to take these two E strings the nuts still on the guitar so I'm going to hook it into the nut and I'm going to bring it down here and I'm going to double check that my E to E is about good and it's not. Bridge needs to go this way just a little. You know, I've got an opportunity to get this bridge on there square and I need to do that. Whether it was on square before or not, it doesn't make any difference. So we got, got me a little more room. Yeah, that's a little too close to the treble. And here's the base side again. Right there. Yeah, just a little. So, same piece of wood. Mm, I have to get a hammer for that. And so, I'm gonna tap it just a little bit more firmer. So, I'm just putting this piece of wood right up against the bridge. Right there. Let's see how that looks. Get both E strings. I'm gonna get both of them this time. I gave them a little bit of extra wrap, but a little bit of extra looseness up there. So now I can get them over. It's not bad, it wouldn't hurt to go a little more. I always want to give it A little bit more room on the treble side than on the bass side because most people will pull the strings off of the treble side rather than the bass side and if you ever fret with your thumb you kind of appreciate that evenness on the bass side so if you're going to make an error push the bass side a little bit closer Not bad. My eyes are getting old. Let's try again. Double check that. Goes into the nut. Pull that down. I'm gonna go ahead and like physically move this string. See if I want to move it here. Yeah, I still do. Still a little bit more. back a little because it's kind of sliding looks good let me check this again yeah 11 and 8 11 and 8 this shot could actually go back a little bit more still Okay, now let's see what we got. Just gotta check these things about a thousand times. Looks good. All right. Now, with that done, Bridge is where I want it. A little bit more. Okay. 
That's pretty good. That's good. Okay, now that I got it where I want it. I'm gonna take the same yardstick, and there's my magic numbers right there 12, and just after four, five, six, and seven eighths. So I'm gonna set that on the middle of the 12th fret. Let's move this back and make sure it's in here. The edge of this yardstick is on the middle of the 12th fret. I'm gonna come back to here. I'm gonna make a pencil mark. Get it right on the low E. Put my pencil mark right there. Double check, double check. Looks good. Come over to this side, same thing, the yardstick on the middle of the 12th fret. It's on that high E and there's my 12th. All right. Now, eyeballing that, I can see this whole bridge can come back a little bit more because this slot is just a little bit farther back than it really should be. So if I get my 50s bridge out here and yardstick, and you measure from the front to the base, it is right in between seven and eight. So I'm gonna measure here and see it's closer to nine. So the bridge can come back a little bit farther. The saddle can move a little closer to the front of the bridge. And over on the treble side, it's right at four. And over here it is in between five and six. So this whole bridge can scoot back a little bit more, which is fine because I'm sitting up on the super glue right now. And I gave it enough super glue. I'm going to tap it back again. You can move this clamp out of the way and get it right on the middle. Okay. Measure. It's on the rear side of 11 and 1 8, which is fine. And it moved back right there, so I did move it back a little bit. And, and the treble side definitely moved back. So, get rid of that mark. Bye bye, Mark. And I covered up this little bit of gap that was on the back here, so I know I scooted it back. So I think that's going to be pretty good. Nobody ever said that 50s was in tune, you know. So I'm not going to go too much stock in that 50s bridge as far as the saddle location. It's just going to be about right on that respect. You know, but I like the way that looks. Now that saddle is a little closer to the front the way it's going to be, but not too close. All right, I got that. 11 and 8. 11 and 8 perfectly. And my mark here again. Right on my red mark. Right on the red mark. All right, now we find a little drill bit that I have for this purpose. Oh, where are you, little drill bit? There it is. Where right, it's supposed to be. So this, just very thin drill bit. I can't even tell you how thick it is. I can't tell you how thick it is. I know it's about the same as, an, as a 46. Yeah, it's a 45. So what I do, as you'll see, is I use um, A-strings. A-strings? A-strings. Check it out. I'm coming here and I'm going to drill me a pilot hole. I'm going right 
right through and broke the tree a bit. <laughs> Wonderful. So, ah, time for a new drill bit. I was wondering when it was going to break. Because ah, it has been in use for a long, long time. No problem. Here's another one. <laughs> okay. Get that right on there. And I've got it right through my bridge plate and everything. It's no big deal. It's just a little bitty hole. Um... What those got to do now, now that I've got that done, I'm going to take this 56 string here and I can put that through there like that. And I've got a marker, so we need to get that bit, drill bit out of there. So now I can place this bridge accurately where I want it. I should just leave that in there. That's a good marker. This is going to be fun. There it comes. I just want to get it off the top of the guitar a little bit, and then I can unscrew it, and I can. So, <laughs> I'll just have to charge a customer for that. No, I, I, you know, I've, I've been using this drill bit for a long, long time, and I've been wondering when it's going to break. Because it's so small. No big deal. Okay. But now I've got pilot holes in the bridge. I've got marker holes in the top right here. And let's make sure that I can in fact go through there. That I did get the drill bit out. And I did. No problem. So now when it comes time to put the bridge back on. I can put my string or glue the bridge back on. Put this in here, put that in there, and boom. And the bridge is back exactly where I want it to be. Okay? Uh, this hole is a little bit loose because it's bigger. So what I would do is I would get a nail, a small pilot nail, and I would sit that in there when I glue it. So, Okay, now what I'm going to do, the back of this, I'm going to check to make sure it's clean and finish. And I think it is. I think it's going to be fine. You know, you can't glue to the finish, so you got to get rid of that. Another thing that works real good is Allen wrenches sometimes. Let's see. They're a little bit too big. You can use an Allen wrench to hold it, and they're about the right size. You can also use the drill bit you just used to drill the hole. Here's a 56. It holds pretty good. And then over here. I probably got to clean that hole out. Yeah, I got to clean that hole out because the drill bit messed it up. But anyway. Actually, I'll just get my little piece of drill bit here. Put it right back in there. And uh, John Arnold does a similar thing like this and, and he leaves the pins in here. And actually just kind of presses it in to the top. And that's probably not a bad way to do it too. Because it really keeps the thing from slipping. And you just leave it in there. And you don't have to drill through the bridge plate and everything. But I should start doing it that way. Because it's a better way to do it. There we go. You should use the drill bit to lock it in there. And I might just glue that in there. Okay. Now I've got my bridge back where I wanted it. So I'm going to clamp it back on again, and I'm going to score it this time. I'm going to get this drill off of here so it doesn't fall over and cause problems. Put that on. I'll probably just leave this on, but I wanted to show you how it works going back on. Get this on, clamp it. And now I'm going to clamp it fairly hard because I don't want it scooting. And before I do anything, I'm going to check it again. 11 and 8. 11 and 8. Bingo. Perfect. Okay? So I was able to set the bridge back right where I wanted it. Now, I'm going to get my razor knife, which is around here. 
someplace. Put this back up so I can find that in a while. Oh, I wish that was nice. <laughs> I was using it earlier. It's right in front of my face. This happened there. There, see, I told you it was right in front of my face. I'm gonna take this razor knife, which is ancient, and all I'm gonna do is press it up against the bridge and score around on the finish, which there shouldn't be any finish. I can feel it going down, you know, into the wood. You're not using any pressure at all, just real light score. And I know it's not on the front because I could feel it falling off of that super glue ledge. I got the super glue ledge pretty accurately to where I want it. Now, here's what I'm talking about. There's very, very, very little finish I'm going to have to take off there. In fact, I might have not have to take any. Um, and I, even though I scooted the bridge back a sixteenth of an inch, because I shortened the bridge this way, now it's able to sit almost right exactly in the same hole. Now, there's a trick I'll show you here. So instead of taking that finish off, which is just barely scoring, what I'm going to do instead is get my razor blade and I'm going to bevel the back edge of this bridge so that it's not flat, so that it's got a little bit of a bevel and it'll sit up on top of that. Um, Collins Guitars does this, only they do it much more precisely. If you ever take the bridge off of a Collins guitar, it's going to actually have a routed out lip all the way around here that sits perfectly down into a hole in the finish. And when I saw that, I kind of got the idea of doing this. And so I'm just going to take this and scrape off the back edge here to make it just a little bit rounded. And I've got to go down to the bench here to keep this steady. So just a little. It's crazy that I don't want to take the finish off, but you see what, um, <clears throat> you could now, if you wanted to, go back to stock setup on this guitar. You could take my finish off, you could put the stock bridge right back in there. I haven't taken any finish off. Uh, I really have not done any damage to the guitar, except, of course, I replaced the bridge plate. But it's just, you know, it's just one of those things. Why take a bunch of finish off here if you don't have to? So what I've done here then is I've put a little bit of a bevel on that bridge on the back edge right there. And the glue will cover that up and you won't see it anyways because it's going to sit down flush with the finish. So it goes on there and that fits in there. Yeah, you know, you could see it if you look real close, you could see that it's not. In other words, if you got um, one of these. You could push it just a little tiny bit, but you'll never see that unless you're just really looking for it because the glue squeeze out is going to hide that a little bit. And it lets that bridge sit down into that hole a lot nicer than it did before. All right, I guess we're ready to glue it on, really. Um, I kind of like... I didn't get to do this because... because I was flattening the top. But the pinholes right here, um, I like to glue dowels in there. And I don't think they do anything for strengthening because, you know, it, it just doesn't because you've got holes in here. You're not making anything strong. But it does give you maybe a little bit more glue surface right there. So <coughs> this bridge is going to come back. Kind of handy having a little drill bit in there. There it is. Click. Yeah, I'm taking away. Um, you know, I'm moving back about a half a hole on there, which is about right for a 70. So I kind of would like to fill that in. I'm not sure if I really can. 
because that blue is dried, you know. I'd have to actually take a drill bit to it or something, route it out. I might moisten that glue up, um, see if I can press it out was in there. So that's probably what I'm going to do. I'm going to moisten that glue up. I've got dowels already pre-cut. And then go in here, but as you can see, these holes are really sloppy. So, I'm not sure how effective that's actually going to be. Maybe we should just forget it. Let's give it a shot. I don't think it'll hurt anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go boil some water over there. Um, so I have some nice hot water to work with. And I'm going to moisten these. I'm going to let it sit for a little while. And I'm going to see if I can get those dowels pressed in there. And if I can, I'm going to leave it overnight. <coughs> mm, sorry. And I'll clean that. Uh, I'll glue that bridge up tomorrow. Um, I would like to get something in there. Even if I have to cut um, little pieces of spruce, you know, because it'll glue to the bridge plate. And then the bridge will be able to glue to that, and it'll give it just a little bit more glue surface. It's not essential. I used to not do it at all, but um, now that I'm making the big bucks and everything, I just try to do it a little bit better. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn the GoPro off. I'm going to get that moist. I'm going to see if I can get those dowels in there, and then we'll see what happens. So we'll see you later.